At this time, we have Oklahoma. For, from Oklahoma, we have head coach, Coach Gasso, uh, student athletes in no particular order, Shea Knighton, Nicole Pendley, Leah Wodak, Paige Parker, and Paige Laurie. Uh, coach, general comments about the game. Then we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, proud of this group. That was a tough game. I, when we look at Oregon on video and we look at their numbers, we're very, very similar. So at times it felt like we were playing ourselves. Their pitcher did a great job of inducing ground outs. Um, we just had we had some opportunities early, but to see these guys come in clutch late in the game when we were down shows um, that this is a setting that they love. They're not intimidated by it. They're not playing afraid to lose. They're playing to win, and that's really been our difference for the, probably the last two months. So. Um, thrilled to be back in the championship game, uh, proud of this group, and hats off to Oregon because, again, they're a team that made us better, and they made us have to prepare very hard to uh, get ready for them in a short turnaround, and I, I think they're a fantastic team. All right, we're going to open up for questions. Remember, uh, name and affiliation, and if you have a question for the pages, please say the last name also. Cliff? Yeah. Uh, Cliff Brown Associated Press. Uh, Shay, on the single that scored two, you kind of dropped it in there to right field. Is that kind of what you were trying to do on that? Uh, um, not really, but I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> it worked. Um, all I want to do is just put the ball in play, something to the right side, and just give my team a chance to score. James Hale, Sports Talk 1400, the ref. Patty, take it through, through this sequence. You just get behind by two. Then you pinch around with Rogers. She gets to third. You send her there. That's, to me, the play that sets everything up because she beats the throw home at that time. So talk about the aggressive play to send her. Their shortstop's really good, and mm -hmm. yet you're able to make the play there. It's, it's a play we've been doing all year long. And um, if we get a ground ball, we are extremely aggressive to go forward. I know that Oregon does the same thing. So... Uh, in big settings like this, you have to be perfect. And the throw has to be on, and Reagan has speed and can create a little bit of havoc. So for us, it was, we got to, I've said it from the start, you just got to go for it. You just got to go for it when you're here, and that's exactly our game plan going in. Joey Helmer, OUinsider.com. Patty, what is it about your team that's so relentless? They score the two runs, and you immediately come back with the four right after that. That's probably a good question for these guys up here. I, they, they are really getting into their groove. We've wasted about eight weeks of trying to figure this out, and I think we're making up for lost time. And they're relaxed. They're playing their best softball. They're having a blast. So it, they don't want it to end. Uh, Glenn Brockenbush, Lot and Constitution. Question for Leah. On that, on that bunt, uh, it appeared – at least from uh, our angle, that the umpire might have uh, signaled foul ball at first, and yet you kept running. The play still went on, and you ended up at second base. What what kind of went through uh, your mind as all that was going on? Um, I was just <clears throat> trying to get some momentum for my team. I knew I had a pretty not great at bat, my first at bat, and I wanted to make something happen, um, start off the inning strong, and just roll the lineup over um, and get the bat into our power hitting hands. So I was just trying to do something for my team. Um, Kind of you got to go for it, like Coach says. You got to go for it here. So just doing whatever I can. Um, and then as soon as I see the ball by the first baseman, I'm going for two. Um, for Paige and Shay, you guys faced four elimination games in the regionals. Then you never trailed against Auburn in the Super Regionals. This is the first time you've trailed since then. Does it make you both appreciate the journey of just how hard it is to get back to this point? Which page? Oh, sorry, Paige Parker. Thank you. Paige. <laughs> Um, I definitely think it does. You know, I think our regional taught us a lot, and I think it was good for us um, to be put in the position we were because with our backs against the wall, I think we play our best softball. And um, I think just having um, that regional, it really does make you appreciate the experience of the World Series and um, just to cherish every moment that we're here, and we just don't want it to end. Like Shay. Paige said, just having our backs against our wall, against the wall, like that's. I feel like that's when we just kind of look to each other and say it's time to step up. Um, being behind 2-0, going into the six was 
going into the fifth was something that we were like, oh, okay, like it's time to step up. They're here to play. And um, what we were doing before, we knew it wasn't working, so we were trying to figure out any way that we could just to get back and score, get runners on base. And going back to our regional, I think that did help us because we realized that any game could be our last game. So just go for it. Leah, John McKelvey with the Norman Transcript. First, two things. First, um, was that a call between you and Patty, uh, the bunt, to, with two strikes? And then, uh, <laughs> and then, did you think it was foul off the bat? Because it seemed like it was you didn't get it down where you wanted to get it down. Yeah, it was supposed to be a little more out. But at that point, with two strikes, you're, I mean, I'm just trying to, I don't know, do what I can, I guess. Um, you're not really thinking about it because it doesn't really matter whether if it goes foul, I'm out. So I'm running down the line as hard as I can. So, and no, that's not, coach did not call that. <laughs> yes, I, you were safe. I did call <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry, yes. If you're out, that was, I don't. That was a called play. <laughs> um, for both of the pages, I, I just want to know about playing in this stadium, your experience level. Did you guys get to play in this stadium before college? And, and how much of an advantage is it to have a, a home crowd here in Oklahoma City? I'll go page Laurie first. Okay. Um, I've played in it with no people in it, really. <laughs> like 100 people tops probably so <laughs> it's a lot more people here um i just try to have the same mindset going into every game um try not to let the crowd affect me just stay focused on the pitch i'm throwing so um, i also played here whenever i was younger but again not nothing like this crowd and um kind of the same thing as Paige is just focusing in on every pitch and it is great that we have so much fan support um, because it really um, helps us get momentum and really fires us up. James Hale, Sports Talk, 1400 The Ref. Nicole, you're hitting everything so hard right now. Is that ball like as big as a grapefruit, a basketball or something? Because uh, it seems like you're getting a good swing on everything. Uh, I think a lot of it is just preparation that we do before games, watching film, um, creating a plan that we stick to. So we go in the box really confident with ourselves, I think. So I think preparation is the biggest thing right now. Cliff? Yeah, yeah Cliff Brown, Associated Press. Coach, just your thoughts on playing Florida. I mean, these two programs won the last four national championships, and you have an opportunity to maybe go ahead in the count here. Just your thoughts on their program and this opportunity. Well, we're very familiar with them. Um, Jen Rocha played, she's an OU alumnus, so is Tim, uh, played baseball there. So there's roots between both programs. Um, they're good, well coached, very complete team. Um, again, we're going to have to play really, really well, um, give all we got, and we're looking forward to it. Coach, does that make that kind of matchup more fun for you because there are such close ties and you know Walton and Jim so well? No, it does not make it fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're competitors. Um, and so I think we both kind of know each other's style some, although we haven't played them since he's been at Florida. So it's, it's uh, intriguing that we're facing each other in this setting for a national championship. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to it. They're well coached. Pitching staff's phenomenal. They're they're all just they're a very complete team. But at the same time, I think we are too. Um, we we just do it in different ways. So I think it'll be a great great matchup and great for television and great for the fans. I have one more question. They said on the broadcast that you showed. Um, your ladies, the documentary of the UConn women's basketball team last night. Why did you feel the need to do that last night, and just what was the reason behind that? I didn't. Sh I didn't show it last night. Oh, you didn't no, I did oh, not. Okay. What ladies are saying that? <laughs> oh no, I just we show we watched it. Yes. Throughout the season. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, because I think they. Uh, I was not. I guess trying to find the right way to lead this team. Um, UConn women's basketball has won it so many times in a row and we were still in that place where we weren't getting our championship mindset bracelets we were still wearing white or uh, black cleats instead of our white cleats and I thought to see another female sport play at the highest level what is it that makes them so good and afraid of nothing it's, you know, everyone's talking about their streak and so forth. So we wanted to learn, I wanted to learn 
um, and actually Sherry Cole really helped me out with um, actually getting a personal um, shout out from Coach Ariyama to this team. And uh, it meant a lot to them because we felt connected as we watched that team go through their, their journey. And uh, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about competition. So wherever we can learn it, whether it's from a female sport, male sport, pro, whatever, kids, it doesn't matter. We're always trying to learn lessons and get better. We learned it from North Dakota State, right on our own field. We learn it all over the place. And I think that's the beauty of this journey is watching the learning and hills and valleys. But um, now we're on we're on top of that hill right now, and it's been amazing to watch. John. Paige Lowry, John McKelvey with the Norman Transcript. One of your pitches was clocked at 75 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thrown that fast, one, and did you feel like you had pep, an extra pep in your uh, pitches today? Um, I think I've had it, I know, one other time in Palm Springs this year, but um, I think adrenaline just kicks in and – just trying to hit my spot. I wasn't really concerned with speed, but it happened to be that fast, I guess. <laughs> I get you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, for Coach, I, you guys are the defending national champs and playing in your backyard, and yet Florida's the number one. I mean, do you go into this with a mindset as a favorite or an underdog? I know you said you guys are playing to win and not to lose. We're a 10 seed playing a one seed, so I think that kind of tells it all. Uh, and that's exactly where we like to be. We're, we're the David uh, of this battle, and we're going to give everything we have. Mayor. Mayor Nagus, Fast Pitch News, Paige Lowry. Um, I think you're the only one up here that's played Florida before, and, but you were a different pitcher then. Um, so what are your thoughts now? Do you feel like you're kind of like a secret weapon at this point? <laughs> I don't know about secret weapon, but... I'm not really nervous. Like you said, I'm completely different, and I'm in a different role. Um, I just really trust everyone around me, so if I get the shot to pitch against them, I know I have confidence, and I just am a different person. <laughs> All right. You'll lean in the back. Jaden Watson-Fisher, OU Daily. Uh, Coach, for the last two consecutive games, you've moved uh, Romero from four to six, Fale from – five to four and Nicole from five to six. Um, it seems, at least to me, a little bit almost counterproductive to put Penley in the middle when you have Romero and Folly who can both get on base. Um, how do you think it's working? I'm sitting in front of you right <laughs> now, so I think it's working okay. Sometimes you gotta go with uh, what's hot and um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's worked. I, I like when I see them come up. I feel confident. I like where they're at. So, um, you look at what they've been doing in the last seven, eight, nine games, and you know sometimes a good mix-up uh, works. So, it, everyone's talking about the middle of the lineup, but an unsung hero is Kelsey Arnold, and she just quietly does her thing and makes things happen. So. Um, I like what she's doing down in the nine right now. So I might move her too. I don't know. <laughs> James Hale, Sports Talk, 14 under the ref. Patty, we've talked all year about the staff, but it's pretty cool that you have a legitimate closer that has, you know, when we think of a closer, she's it, throws hard, throws strikes, you know, it's that kind of thing. So, but you have a dominant starting staff too and a starting all star pitcher. So, as the game goes on, I'm just curious what you're thinking. Are you, are you, and how closely are you watching just so you can – because you have a real good feel when you bring Paige Lowry in. Uh, it's, I don't know. Just looking at how Paige Parker's doing, do we need a momentum swing? Paige Lowry is just such a different pitcher, just throwing hard. Like it's a good differential between the two. If you could see what I'm watching in the dugout between these two, uh, it is awesome to watch because Paige Parker's making the call right along with us. And when Paige Lowry comes into the dugout ready to take the ball, ready to go out on the field, they are right in each other's face. It, it's like a cool little sisterhood that's going on here, a great tag team. And um, 
it works. So I think they kind of know before we yeah. even tell them that we're, we've done it enough that they kind of have it figured out. All right, Cliff and then Mayor. Yeah, Cliff Brown, Associated Press. Uh, Coach Gasso, I know you haven't played Florida, but just your thoughts on what Barn Hill has been able to accomplish over the course of the season. Tremendous pitcher, throws hard, moves the ball around, mixes well. Um, you've just got to be extremely disciplined. You're going to have to be short with your swings. Um, she throws the ball hard. She's done a fantastic job and very worthy of the um, Player of the Year award. So she led her team, um, although they have a great pitching staff. She she's um, led her team here. So. We're going to have to be really good and very disciplined when we face her. Final question. Mayor Nangus, Fast Pitch News, Paige Lowry, uh, one more. Um, this team won this last year, but you weren't here. Um, now they go. Now you guys go into this championship series again. How do you prepare for this since you weren't in this position before? I'm just very grateful for the opportunity. Um, in the past, I've come up short with the team I was on, so I'm just very grateful to be in this position, and I take us any day. I'm really excited. All right. Coach, ladies, thank you. Congratulations again. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-stale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network. See all of our shows and blogs at www.fastpitch.tv.